Alright guys, let's begin chapter one. Chapter one is entitled Tools of Geometry. Alright, basically what we'll do in the entire first chapter is lay the groundwork for every type of geometric figure in principle for the rest of the year. Um, a basic understanding and a, or a phenomenal understanding of this chapter is going to greatly benefit you throughout the course. So let's start with section 1, one points, lines, and planes, and I should uh, mention this, that you should be taking notes along with the video um, as I'm going through the presentation with you. You should be taking some notes um, along the line. Also, please know that some of the definitions, or most of the definitions, are online already on Quizlet for you to view at your viewing pleasure. All right, so without further ado, let's get into the first section of chapter one entitled points lines and planes All right, everything in geometry stems from three uh, undefined terms All right, undefined terms are just terms that we can't define using already known uh, words those three undefined terms are points lines and planes alright so let's take a look at what um, the definitions of each of them are that we try and make as best we can. All right, a point, it's a location in space that doesn't have any size or shape. All right, it's represented by a small dot as you see here, and you can see there's a capital letter here for a point. All right, so how can we name this point? Well, we could do it two ways. We could name it using the word point and go and say it is point A or we can just simply say A with a capital A alright second undefined term is a line a line is made up of points and has no thickness or width alright it extends in two directions uh, without bound without bound it extends infinitely so if we look here at this uh, line here right, it extends in uh, opposite directions without end. All right, and the uh, points P and Q are on the line. We also have this lowercase italicized M here. All right, let's talk about how to name this line here. There are th a couple different ways we can name this line here. We can name it by points on the line. All right, and if we do that, one of the lines, one of the names for this line, will be line PQ with a line bar over top, or we could conversely name it line QP with a line over top of that. The other way that we can name this is using this lowercase m here. We can name it as line m or just as long as it's lowercase and italicized, that tells us what that it's a line here. But if this M was not here, we would have to name it by its points. All right. Another note about lines here. All right. Through any two points, there is exactly one line. That should be an algebra one review sort of concept right there. That last line there. Through any two points, there is exactly one line. All right. And then the last undefined term is a plane. It's a flat surface made up, made up of points that extends infinitely in all directions. Easiest real life example that I could think of for you guys uh, that illustrates the concept of a plane would be a floor or a wall or a tabletop surface. All right. Even though those technically uh, end at some point, just know that a plane is similar to that, those types of figures, except it extends infinitely in all directions here. In geometry, typically, a plane uh, is going to be denoted by a four-sided figure like this one here. Uh, but just know it does go infinitely in these directions. All right. So let's talk about how we name this plane here. All right. You can see we have points B, C, and D on this plane here. So we can name them first, name planes, by the number of points. By points and we take three points all right as long as we put 
the word plane in front of it, we could choose points B, C, D and name it that way. We can take uh, B, D, C like that. We can name it as plane, say, C, V, D. We can name it as plane C, D, B. We can name it as plane DBC. We can name it as plane DCB. Notice I'm using capital letters because these three are points, right? It only takes three points to determine a plane, so that's why we only use three points. Line would be two. And you'll also notice we have this uppercase italicized K here. There's actually another way to name a plane. And it's very similar to how we name name points. All right, or name lines, uh, very similarly, very similar. All right, we can name it as say, plane K because that's a uh, uppercase italicized letter that usually denotes a plane, or we could just name it as plane K. We could say a whole bunch of things, all right? So notice, we have eight different ways to name a plane here based on this diagram. Any one of these is correct, is a correct representation. Similarly with lines, we have four ways here that we named this line. Either one, any one of them is correct. All right, so let's uh, keep going here. Uh, a couple more terms that we have to define here. Um, collinear points, they're points that lie in the same line. All right, uh, if two or more points are not on the same line, then they are called non-collinear. Coplanar points, they are points that lie in the same plane. And coplanar lines are lines that lie in the same plane. All right, notice for all of these, the prefix co. All right. I know this isn't an, an English class, but think about grammar. What does the word, the prefix co mean? Well, it usually means the same. All right. And then you use the geometric term to denote if they're points or lines. And they're points that lie on the same line, plane, or lines that lie on the same plane. Space, space is a defined term. All of these here are defined terms. It's just the first three points, lines, and planes that aren't defined, are considered undefined, but everything else pretty much is defined. Uh, space is defined as a boundless three-dimensional set of all points, and space can contain both lines and planes. So with all that knowledge, we are set to begin our first uh, example problem here. All right, this diagram right here references these these first three questions are using this diagram here so the first question says name a line containing points P and T point P is here point T is here the easiest way we can name it name that line if we want to use just those two points just take those two points write them down and put an arrow over top we could also go with TP with the arrows over top. We could also say we want to use point N here because point N is on the same line as PT. We can go uh, say PN with the line over top or even NP. We're all we're, we're naming the same exact line here. And if you wanted to we could use T, go TN, line TN, or NT, like that. Or we can go and use that lowercase italicized letter G and say it's line G or G. All right, another way to name plane S here. Plane S is this geometric figure here. Look for three points that lie on plane S. So those would be uh, P, Q, T, N, and R. Take any of those three points and um, and use them. 
with the word plane. So we have plane, let's say PTQ. We could say, we could even say plane QRN. There's a whole bunch of different ways we can name it, and they would be right. As long as you pick three points on plane S and put the word plane in front of it, you're fine. All right. Reason why we can't pick M, M is not on that plane. All right. And then the last uh, question for this diagram here is what is the intersection of lines G, H, and J? Well, line G and H intersect in point at point T. Line J intersects those two at point T. So the intersection of lines G, H, and J is at point T or just T. All right. Last few examples. All right. Fourth exam fourth, fifth, and sixth question here references this diagram here. How many planes are shown in this fig figure number four? Well, we have plane A here. We have at least one. We have plane A. Plane XMN, that's actually plane A, so we don't need to name it twice. Alright, so let's look at the faces of this uh, diag this uh, figure here. We have plane WMN, that's this front face here. We also have the back face here, plane TQR. Alright, that's on the other side that you'd see if you walked around and looked over that side. If we looked on this side here, we have plane QPN. And if we looked from this side, we have plane TWM. So there we have one, two, three, four, five planes. We still have to account for the top. So there are five planes shown here. Three collinear points. Think about the definition of collinear. Collinear points are points that lie on the same line. So we have to figure out which three of these, which set of three points lie on the same line. The only points that satisfy that condition are points M, X, and S. So M, X, and S are collinear points. And then the last example are points N, R, S, and W coplanar. So let's look and find out. Definition of coplanar. Uh, coplanar points, points that lie in the same plane. Let's look. N, R, and S are on the same plane. Is W on the same plane? No, it is not. So your answer is no, because W is not on the same plane. It's not on the same plane as N, R, or S. Right. So that's the foundation for uh, geometry. Um, first section of geometry lays the basic found work. All right. Um, there are a couple of questions uh, that I want you to complete as well after viewing this video um, and taking notes on it. Um, those questions are as follows. They are on text textbook page 8, numbers 1 through 5 and 8 through 12. Those questions, if you've paid attention, followed along with this video, should take uh, no longer than 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, so in, all, in actuality, this assignment shouldn't last you any more than 25 minutes, um, maybe 30 minutes. All right. Thank you very much. See you guys in class. Bring any questions you may have. I'm going to check this to see if you have the notes and homework done, uh, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Have a great day.